Ultimate School 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what up? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Sexual Revolutions being podcasted. I am excited. What's up, Money Mike? How you doing, bro? Good to see you, bro. Doing good, doing good. How you feeling? Eh, it's nasty as shit out. We running a little late, but it happens. You know, I'm a little wet and, you know, a little dank. But all right, we'll, we'll, we'll handle it. We'll see what we got, man. Um... It's good to be back, man. Good to be back. Good to be back. Good to talk to the fans. Um, and, you know, the store for all the Godfrey's fans. I'm here to just entertain you uh, while Godfrey gets here as well. Uh, and then we're doing Godfrey's show right afterwards. Uh, you know what this is, y'all. Live consultations uh, for the next hour and a half or at least hour and uh, 15 minutes. Let's get that number up, um, Mike. Had a had a great weekend. Uh, I talked to a dude. I had a consultation, Mike, in uh, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, it was interesting. I didn't even I didn't know that was a thing. How culturally can you <laughs> even help that man? Now, here's what's interesting about even that, right? Uh, I, I you know I'm not going to name any names, right? Because I'm 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 respectful. But uh, uh, this guy was a uh, fiance. Let me call out the number real quick. 347 464 Apparently he was a, a, a fiance. His fiance was a sex worker because in Tokyo, I didn't know if you knew this. I mean, uh, but sex working is, is legal out there. Uh, go ahead. I didn't know that. I just know that they were all very like... Uh... Like the sexuality out there is crazy. It's, very, it's like suppressed. But it's weird because sex because uh, sex work is illegal, right? But get this, this I did not know. Everything uh, is legal, other than penetration. So you could right, but no punk punk punk. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who's to say where the line is at that point? <laughs> I mean, I don't. I, I would argue that I don't believe that. Uh, I don't believe that uh, sex working is legal. You, I mean, hand job, everything but the. You know. Well, it's almost like how in, in America everything but a rub and tie. Like you, you know, it's it's like. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's ridiculous. It it. I mean, like what? I don't. I don't. I don't get it. It's like. That's like going to a Thai food place and eating nothing but appetizers. You know what I'm saying? Let me get the curry puffs. Let me get the Thai wings. Uh, you want a meal? How about how about a nice uh, red curry or something? No, 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 no. No, that's no, illegal. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, and not not just fucking, but I mean illegal. Like you can be arrested for for the. But what undercover cop is like? Waiting outside a hotel room <laughs> while, while someone's in there getting blown by something, and then like as soon as he puts it in, I'm jumping. In. <laughs> I, it's weird because you know they got they got creepy. Uh, they also got creepy. What you call it? You know, like they have they have a a, a parade. I knew this. That they have a huge parade. Uh, that's like a parade of penises. It's like this whole penis floats and stuff that they have. But then and but then when you look at Asian porn, it's uh. It, it, like it's everything's pixelated out, you know. It's weird, but, I, but you know, in a sense, I feel, uh, you know, you drop a bomb on people. Sometimes they get a little wacky. You know what I mean? You, 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 you I'm not laughing because of the bomb, but I'm saying you drop a nuclear bomb on people. You know, it's it's hard to get your shit together. You know what I mean? We got a call too. If you yeah, want. let's do it. Let's do it. Call you on the air. Hey, what's up, Dante? What's up? Who who am I speaking with, bro? Where you from? Hey, this is Adonis, bro, from uh from Houston, man. We spoke before. What up, Adonis? How you doing, bro? You know well, bro. How you feeling with the super soldiers, man? I'm good, man. I'm feeling better, man. My arm is I can lift my arm above my head. My back is actually feeling great. Uh two more weeks and I'm in uh I start uh every what he's talking about the super soldier. If, who doesn't know? I I went for I went down to Tijuana for stem cells for another bout of stem cells. So um I'm I'm feeling better. Thanks for asking. How can I help you, my brother? 
Yeah, man, for sure. That's just tight, man, for me to to know about that. I've seen the the articles and stuff about it, but for you to be actually going through it and well, thinking reports about it, that's good, bro. But uh, man, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to come in. And, uh, I just wanted to come in and talk with you real quick about uh the the five what we call them again? The five bricks. Yeah, the five bricks, man. All right, so let me uh, let me explain this to oh, yeah, let me explain this to the audience before you ask whatever question you're asking. All right, so I have a okay. plan. I have a plan that helps young men, older men, and in between guys who have a problem with uh, getting dates, uh, the acquisition of feminine company. I have a plan that I put people through. Hit me on DanteNero.com. You can click on consult if y'all want to consult with me and you want me to teach you the whole plan, but I'll give you the, there's a few steps of that. And the, uh, the first step is laying the five bricks. What laying the five bricks refers to is that um, if I get a guy, some guy who's really not uh, comfortable talking to women, I have him, uh, he is to go out every day for eight weeks and uh, compliment five women a day, right? Uh, those compliments need to be sincere. They need to, you, the compliment has to be truthful, right? Um, they need to be uh, non-sexual, and the and the the it, it's an array of women. It's not just the women that you want to talk to, right? And at the first step, you are not allowed to get the telephone number. You're not allowed to get the number, okay? So that's the first step, and I'll explain, ask your question, and I'll explain the aspects of that and what, what it actually does for young men and older men or people who are a little awkward. Okay, um, pretty much the, the first step of the five bricks is it's easy to me, just to find some always appreciated women, and I never had a problem with it. Just, just giving them their, their compliments or whatever. Right. To the point where, uh, you know, just to get on a good report, you know, this is a part of, I used to be a server. Right. You know, you got to be. Yeah, so you have to be, ice you got to be right. polite anyway. Right. I, yeah. I so, get it. Um, that's easy for me. The thing that I don't. But I let me, let me ask you, you this. One, are you laying the five bricks in just as you're working or are you going out specifically to go lay the bricks? No, see, I was, I used to be a server right now. I'm driving trucks. Okay. So whenever right. I do have the time to to get into human interactions, Walmart, whatever it is, okay. even at the, the fuel station. I'm, okay. I'm shooting my shot. All right. So, um, um, so go ahead. Yeah. What's, what's the question? So, yeah, since I, since I am driving trucks, man, I, like, I'm three weeks on and one week off. Okay. And I'm not really having that time to build relationships. So right now I feel myself kind of guarding. Well, you're not, you're not, I mean, you understand laying the five bricks is not to build a relationship. It has nothing to do with building a relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you saying, I mean, Uh, but you do, you do go to rest stops and stuff like that, right? You do do that. All right, before I, before I continue, outside of the, the, what is the the whole purpose? Okay, I'll give you the, I'll give you the the, the, the first step, or how do you graduate? The first step, well, you got to get the first step down. So let me explain what the, what the, what the. What laying the five bricks does. So every every guy that I've ever consulted with, every guy and most of every guy that I know, um, all liars. Okay. Now I don't want you to take offense to that, but I want I'll explain why. When you have a guy who who considers himself a righteous person, right? He will moreover than not um, consider lying something that he does with some kind of ill intent, some kind of malintent, right? But there are two other lies. There are two other ways to lie that you do. Guys will lie, especially lie to women, because they don't want to end up in a confrontation. I don't want to say anything because I, I don't want to start up an argument, right? Uh, they will also lie because they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, right? Now, in a guy's mind, what he does is he, he rates those lies in, on a different scale, so there's something I call the Judge Judy effect. It's like, I don't know, I mean, I'm a little old school, but if you know when Judge Judy, you would go on, on anybody who watched Judge Judy, young, youngins who have you ever, never watched it, you can, you can Google it and YouTube it. But what happens is you go on, it's a court, court show, and when you go on in, when Judge Judy would catch you lying, right, 
What would happen after she catch you lying? You tell me. She'll grill you. Really? That's that's what that's what you thought, or well, I, that's that's what you did. Like, right. Yeah, so, but like, what most importantly, what happens is you lose your credibility, right? Yeah. So if you listen to any, you listen to my content. One of the three the three principles that I talk about is authenticity, credibility, and empathy. Authenticity yeah. is telling the truth. Credibility is doing what you say and saying what you do. Empathy is understanding that the people that you have a social dynamic with are going through things that uh, going through things that you may not be aware of or, or not be privy to. Now, why is authenticity uh, important? Authentic telling the truth is important because if you lie, right, the woman doesn't know when you're telling the truth. You once you lose credibility. She can't ever believe you. Why is truth important? Truth is important because a woman looks to a man on a base level. There's no relationship if there's no trust. If there is no trust, it, you, you can't even move to, 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 to square two, you know? And what happens is if you are lying about uh, not to avoid conflict or to not or to not uh, hurt somebody's feelings, it's still a lie. You lose the credibility. And if you're a liar, how can she ever know? Uh, if you tell her you love her, how does she know you're telling the truth? Mm -hmm. If you tell her, I got your back, how does she know you're telling the truth? And so when you talk about something, the basic fundamentals of attraction is, is, is a woman needs to feel safe with a guy. She needs to feel safe with him. She needs to feel, she needs to know that he has her back. You you instantly demolish those that opportunity because you lose your credibility. Okay, doing right. the five bricks, what it does is the, the the compliments that you have to play you you pay have to be honest. You just yeah. can't say you if you don't think she looks pretty, you can't say she looks pretty. If you don't like her sweater, you can't just say it's not about you. Just it's about you honestly taking a look at this woman, right? From I mean, don't, don't be staring at her creepy, but looking at something that you feel is dope, stands out to you, and then expressing it. Now, here's the, here's the thing about that. If it's true, it will ring true to her, which communicates to her that you're trustworthy. I mean, I, there's a whole bunch of steps that get you before you end up in the bedroom, but at the, at a, on a base level, if a woman doesn't trust you, She's already, you see, being untrustworthy, being a liar means that you're deceptive. Deceptive can be read as, can be read as, as um, malicious. Malicious can be dangerous. And you, you shut the whole attraction process down, right? So the first thing men have to do is learn how to tell the truth and know what that looks like. And I know it seems like it's not something difficult to do, but every guy who I've counseled, DanteNimmer.com, click on consult. You can talk to me and we'll, I will explain this in depth and the nuance of it. But um, it, 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 you think you know how to tell the truth, but you don't. Because you're so, we're so accustomed to, to not making truth the bed, the bed root of who we are as people. We don't want to we don't want to end up confrontations. We don't want to get fired. We don't want this. We don't want that. Whatever the case. So, so we don't really know how to tell the truth because we're always lying in, in social situations. Secondly, um, in order to tell the truth and to have to pay a compliment that is uh, that is honest, you have to be present. You have to be present. You have to observe. You have to use some kind of thinking instead of you know if you thinking of all you thinking about is that fat ass. You're not really engaging with her. As a human being, you're engaging with her because of your own needs, which which your needs are basically selfish. You wanna you wanna use her as a dick cozy. So you're not you're not really paying attention. So the first thing it does is it teaches you how to be honest. The second thing it touch, teaches you is how to be present. Now um, the third thing it teaches you it teaches you how to be observant and 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 you know and and that happens within the presence and the, the the most important thing is you do this with a frequency of five times a day with somebody who's absolutely strange as a stranger to you right the anxiety that you have when you're engaging in uh, the anxiety that you have when you're engaging with a woman I don't care who it is 
you there's a especially if you find her attractive there's something at stake and whenever there's something at stake there's a fear of rejection there's a fear of losing and if there is a fear of rejection or fear of losing then you're nervous and and emotion something else i say often is never never let emotion have a seat at the table i don't care what you do if you if you're a boxing fan or an mma fan one of the things why boxers and fighters spar and they fight and they fight is because they need to learn how to keep maintain composure in a situation that would more over people would be perceive it as as uh emotional fear uh fight or flight all those things so you have to get past the the idea of fear because the minute you allow emotion to have a seat at the table what happens your brain operates at one third the capacity the things that you do know the things that you know about about social dynamics, the things that you 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 can you can count on you cutting your your charisma, your your intellect down to a third because now all the blood. I mean, it's just mm. scientifically all the blood goes everywhere because you're you're afraid, and so you have an ent- there's an entity where you are you are afraid, so you can't be your true self. So just by doing the way the way the five bricks, because I'm not asking. See, the other thing is I'm I'm specifically telling you at the first phase is to not get the number because then not not getting the number so your task is only to observe be honest pay a compliment and move on right so it's not about you getting the number it's not about you getting laid the only thing it's about is you being honest observing being present paying a compliment and move it away now here's what it does the dynamics of it to a woman because now you are a man who, in his, who is comfortable in his own skin, can see something beautiful, and feels comfortable enough that, 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 that he can express it without, uh, without the, the, the social dynamics being tra- transactional. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. And because it's yeah. not transactional, that she she's more up she's more uh, um, because women I've said this a hundred times women are probably the most intuitive beings ever. It's because they are physically the weaker sex because they uh, every time a woman goes out on, goes out on a date with a guy she has to she what has to she, what has to be one of her considerations is that she you might kill her. Do you understand that? Like that's not something that and that way that's where the empathy comes in. If you think about the fact that women have to consider that every time they got to consider whether you might murder them or they should go to the Olive Garden for free salad and bread. And 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 so that's not something I'm I'm quite sure you've never gone out and considered, well, I might get raped by this woman. In fact, you might you, you probably wanted her to rape you, you know, if, if that's, but this but you understand there's a different dynamic for women that, that a lot of times men don't have that they don't even have that that consideration and that's where the empathy comes in. So when we so at that first step, you're being honest, you're being present, you're being observant, you're showing a level of confidence because there's nothing at stake. You're not trying to, I'm, I'm specifically telling you not to get the number. In fact, you are not allowed to get the number if you're following the, the, the directions. And then you do that with a sense of, with a frequency of five times a day, which is, which is a psychological uh, term where, which you call um, exposure therapy. That happens a lot of times when people have phobias. People are exposed in large in large quantities of the thing that they're afraid of until they're not afraid of it anymore. Because a phobia is a fear of something that really doesn't exist. And because our brain puts those two things together, link those things together, we have a fear of it. So it's something like, um, you know, maybe you're a kid, your mother's playing, your little, you're a five-year-old, and your mother plays Marvin Gaye. Right. And then a dog, you get attacked by a dog and you not knowing it, the brain puts Marvin Gaye together, Marvin Gaye music and dog and dog. It's it's it becomes Pavlovian, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you you have to get past those things is you got to get past the fear. You got to learn how to be honest and you got to learn to talk to women when it's not transactional. And what happens is when you find a woman attractive, right, you want to fuck her. You desire her, so it is transactional. And because you don't really understand 
what you have to offer and you don't really understand what your personal what your personal value is it is transactional and it comes off creepy when a guy right, so look, go ahead all right so i've been doing it for like probably like six months now okay and um it seems like at this point it's just it's all blended together yes i do have ones that i'm really really attracted to and yet still in the ones that don't like I wouldn't even think about getting in the bed. I'm it's still yeah, but the, like, but the question is I really see it, it, I, it, I still see something. I'm like, that's here's, a woman, here's, my here's my question. Here's my question. Yeah, is is the one are the ones that you are attracted to you? Do you approach them with the same calm and collectiveness that you approach the ones that you're not attracted to? Yeah, so yes, yeah, sure. So, um, at this point, this was, when I'm doing the things, I'm, I'm cool and I'm comfortable, I'm doing it so smooth that it just seems like oh i feel it man when i, I give them one they're like oh wow like it'd be some some different stuff and then they'd be like all right and what is like, what okay, is what is my, my question is what is their response when you are cool and collective and and you you know and it's non they right? become hella interested you know my, like, they're egg, like exactly where the fuck are you coming from <laughs> exactly and so that's the whole point of it the point is to get to the point see because we all have these these moments where we are in our life, friends, family, or something, places where we're most comfortable, right? And in those situations most where we're most comfortable, we are most like ourselves, and we're more charming because we're confident and we're secure, and those things exude. A lot of times when you approach a woman, especially a, a, an attractive woman, we, oh, my God, this, this woman, you, you put her value above you, and then it's as, as, you you're, as you're engaging, then the anxiety builds. Because then it becomes, what if I get her? What if I get her in bed? What if I get, and and then, so you got to do this. Literally what I'm doing is is exposure therapy. Therapy is like what, what boxers do. They get punched in the face so often and so frequently that it doesn't it doesn't shake them up when they do get punched in the face. Where a regular, a regular like a regular square dude who doesn't fight, he get if he gets smacked in the face, his, you know, his brain just, you know, like he short, short circuits. So what I'm trying to, the whole process of laying the five bricks is so that you don't cir- short circuit and then you, you, um, you know, you're able to communicate in a calm kind of sexy way. And what you'll find also, here's the other thing. A lot of times, especially when there's an attractive woman, a guy, a, a guy will feel um, weak, will feel as though he has... Uh, like he's almost begging or he's like, what you start to realize is that you are way more powerful as a human being. And I don't mean just men, but women as well. I mean, when you have power over people, when the thing, when you can just pay a small compliment that's honest and, 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 and specific and where you're really present, right? You, if you've been doing this for six months, I'm guaranteed that you've had situations where you've paid the compliment and the woman is ranted on, oh, thank you so much. Where mm-hmm. she, she wants to engage with you because you're doing it, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and so that's why it's working. That's how you know it's no, working. So my question is, do I just leave it there? Do I still? How long do I continue to leave it there? Or okay, when do so, I start so I mean, you got. I, I mean, there's a lot of nuance to it. So I mean, that's why I do the consultations because there's nuance to it. I, and I would have to kind of, I would have to kind of. We would go through some of the some of the engagements, the social engagements you went, and I would kind of critique where you could be better, and then I would take you to the next stage. I'll just say briefly, I mean, it's a, it's a lot, you know, it's, it's a very nuanced situation because relationships are the most complicated things because, you know, um, a lot of times you get a guy and a woman, you know, ha- okay, here's a question. Have you ever gone with a woman and gave her a compliment and she didn't respond at all? Hmm. Yeah. Or just very like okay. Yeah, you. like whatever. Moving on. Okay, so let me ask you. Yeah. So a guy who is, who is um, is insecure will will create a this kind of fictitious story in his in his head about what happened. He's not attractive mm-hmm. enough, or he's not a tall enough, or he's not his dick ain't big enough, or she could tell that he don't got no money. Because what happens is when that happens, we go to our insecurities, and. Mm-hmm. What happens is you're creating a narrative that that you don't even know if the case. This woman's grandmother could have died earlier. 
and she's just not responding to you because she just had a death in the family. Her cat could have died, right? She might have just found out that she has AIDS. Who knows what, or or she has lymphatic cancer. I'm I'm saying it's an endless number of things that it could be. Why this woman, this woman didn't respond to you with a smile and and and, and acknowledge you. But what do men do? They make it because of their insecurities. They make it about themselves, and then it's because I ain't tall enough, and I ain't mm -hmm. good looking enough, or I don't make enough money. Which I'm not saying that that couldn't be the case. All of those things could be true, but it could also be a million other other a, a million other variables. And but we make it about ourselves because of yeah, our even insecurities. Even if it was true, it's just that one girl. It's not like every girl is going to be giving that energy. Like, right, but even that I one girl, I mean, I mean, you wouldn't, if she just lost her grandmother, you wouldn't expect her to go, oh, thank you so much, you're so kind. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, we all go through, th I mean, that's the, that's the thing about, as human beings, we all go through stuff. You know what I mean? So to make it about yourself is, is, a, is a lack of empathy to not even see and to just give the person that the benefit of the doubt that the person might be going something that you don't know. So the, 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 but as you get as you get more proficient at it, your compliments become more. I will say if I had to explain, it would be more artistic, like more specific. Like I know I I love I love women's high heels, right? So I would go, oh, I love those Manolo Blancs, right? Which is I don't know if you know, but that's a type of shoe, right? I love I that. Oh, oh, that. Oh, I love I love your, uh, you know. Or oh, I'm in the gym and I go, oh my god, I love your traps. They're so sexy. Like so now a woman, okay. now, or or wow, your makeup is impeccable. I, I love that smoky eye. So as you become more open to 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 kind of express yourself, because a man that expresses himself himself in detail is a man that's confident. So there's always a subtext of the communication. There's always a subtext of when you're communicating because the truth will come out. I don't care what it is. If you're insecure, that insecurity will come out. If you, if you think you're too, like I always say this, you know, a guy who's 5'4 that lies and says he's 5'6, five, he's five, it's because in the back of his mind, he thinks that 5'4 is not enough. So he, in his mind, whether he realizes it, realizes it on a conscious level or not, what he's saying, if, if I was only two inches taller, then I would, uh, if I was only two inches taller, then I would be enough. But, and, and don't get me wrong, it could be because you're not tall. I, I mean, but the, here's, here's my question. If a woman is going to, if everything about you is perfect and a woman is going to dump you, because you're one or two inches shorter than what she thinks she deserves, right? That's probably not a woman who you wanna you wanna be with. That's just somebody who's very shallow and 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 very specific about her shallowness, and that's just not somebody that you wanna. So it also weeds out the dirt bags too. That makes sense. Okay. Yes, sir. So uh, what you start to, as you get more comfortable, you make those compliments. You start, it's like you start styling on them. <laughs> you know, I love that cashmere. Yeah, that's what I'm feeling like, like, yeah, that, like I'll go. Nice and this, so you get tired of that, and now you just want to start putting your flavor on it. Right, right, but that's what you should. You get bored, and then you get more creative. Like, I love that cashmere yeah. sweater. The color yeah. makes your skin pop. Your makeup is impeccable. <laughs> you know, um... You know, you you start to know, because, but but in order to, to to kind of express the specifics of that, you have to also explore yourself. You gotta you gotta talk about you gotta you got to explore who you are as a person and how and how those and what you like, which is just as important. A woman finds a man attractive who thinks that he's important. I don't love nobody more than I love myself, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't, if you if you got to put your happiness first because if you don't, she won't. Because you, you have to understand, in a conversation, how does a woman get to know who you are? You tell her. You tell her by her your, your insecurities. You tell her by your body posture. You tell her by, by the way you, the gait of your walk, how fast you talk, how specific and how the, the vocabulary you use. All of those things are very important in terms of you're, you're communicating her on a subtextual level 
about who you are. And she's picking it up. You know why she's picking it up? Because intuitively, you might murder her. Mm-hmm. Make sense? Yes, sir. So I think it's even instinctually and maybe even genetically women have this intuitive sense because it needs to. We have, as human beings, we have a, we have a, evolutionarily, we have a thing where we look at, like if you ever look at a plug and it looks like two eyes and a mouth, right? You ever see that, like a, like a plug on the wall? Um, yeah, that, yeah, I know you're talking about. that is a genetic, that is a genetic, um, an evolutionary thing. It, it was, it was us in the jungles being able to recognize predators in the grass. So when you have all this foliage and you can see the lion stalking you, the guys, the the, the, the men and women who didn't see the face in the in the in the um in the in the foliage died. So evolutionary, it's something. So what I'm saying is, is I, I I mean I can't prove this. I'm not a scientist, but it just seems logically to me that that would um, you know that that would uh that that evolutionary a woman's intuitiveness for her own safety is just something that you develop and now no you know we're not being stalked by bengal tigers and whatnot so make sense yes sir uh <laughs> before you before i go man um you are very you have multiple careers under your belt man that you that you really uh excelled at yeah how did you how did you go about incorporating like even it don't have to be relationships. Cause I know I got. I'm in my money over bitches mode right now. I'm really on some sack it up and building up the yeah. whole bachelor life and shit like that. And I don't mind that. And I don't. I, I don't judge that either. I just think you need to be honest about that. What do you mean? <laughs> I mean, like if you're talking to a woman and she's interested, you need to say, look, I, you don't have to say it's money over hoes, but you could say, listen, I'm in a place where here's how you you say that. It's without without lying. You say I'm 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 in a transitional period right now where um, my career and my goals I'm goal orientated and I really don't have time uh, to give you the time that that you may need. It's the truth, okay. right? Yeah. So when I say be honest, so, yeah. not and not try to hurt somebody's feelings, what I'm not saying is, you know, somebody says, "Oh, how do I look fat in that dress?" You don't go, "Hell yeah, fat bitch!" I don't need you to do that. What you can say is I don't I don't really think that's flattering. Now, I will say this. If I'm dating somebody and she and I'm I'm being polite, I'm being I'm being uh you know uh I guess kind about my honesty, right? And then she go, well, what the fuck does that mean? Then I on the second time around I'm go, you a fat bitch. That you don't need to wear that. Like if you want to double down because it, it, there's a subtext to that. What the fuck you trying to say? Well, I'm now I'm gonna say it. Because she has to because her doubling down is also her saying, you know, it's like it's like I mean, I, I you know, I you know, I I may or may not have been a street dude at some point in time, but if I if somebody says something to me and I go and they go, "Yo, you, all you motherfuckers better watch your mouth." And I go, "And if not, what the fuck you going to do?" That mm-hmm. it's a challenge. I remember when I was in Brooklyn. I was running Brooklyn. I'd be running on Brooklyn, and people used to steal your sneakers off your feet. They'd be like, "Yo, my man, what size are those?" And I, and you, the the only answer was my size, motherfucker. <laughs> so you understand what I'm saying? We understand the dynamics of the social dynamics of when somebody's pushing you. Just like if you if you say, "I, I just don't think that that's flattering." Well, what the fuck does that mean? You fat bitch. It don't fit. I'm not saying you got to go from zero to 60, but I'm saying if somebody, that is a, a situation where she's testing to see if you're man enough to, to stand 10 toes down. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, and if you, if anybody out there who wants to, you know, learn this stuff, man, I teach it, uh, DanteNero.com, click on consult. Don't forget that we also teach a lot of this stuff. If you can't afford the consultation, you could go to, uh, www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Um, or you can listen, man, listen and, and call on the lives. We do this live every eight, every, every Tuesday, 830, if God willing. And well, I don't believe in God, but that's a whole nother thing. But, um, but you know, if I can be here and, and, and teach and stuff, and and I and I live this stuff. You know, the number's 
I, I live this. I practice it on every, any level. Anybody that knows me, anybody that watches me knows that I practice it. Um, I, I, I stand with my 10 toes down. I am always authentically uh, myself. I have, I will not make a promise and not, not question. I will not have anybody question my credibility. And I've always been kind enough to understand that people are going through things that I don't, I may not experience. I haven't, I haven't been everywhere. I don't know everything. Um, and I, and I think that is also the problem when you see a lot of these dating coaches even and, and and I always talk about Kevin Samuels, no no name above his rest in peace. <laughs> but one of the things that I the critiques I had about him is he had a very um, rigid idea of of this is this and that's that and and it just don't work that and and when you look at him you could see he wasn't a dude who was a um he wasn't a dude who was who who was really experienced in that. Because it's 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 the love is messy, emotions are messy, insecurities are messy, and especially that we grow up in a in a situation with, with um you know with parents uh, like immigrant parents or descendants of slaves and 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 we are in an era right now where you know, you know children are pursuing um they're pursuing their own happiness which is something that we didn't do before we gotta we gotta call Mike. No, um, where where people are uh, uh three four seven four six four two eight two seven. That's the number. Call in. I'm here. Um, I'm here till ten 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 o'clock. So um, call in. Uh, you know we, what I was saying is that we have we have this is an era where people are going to therapy and people are fixing themselves and they're they're finding out what that they're motivated. That a lot of times bad children bad childhood and, and and inequipped parents and you know just the the, the regular rigmarole of raising children and living and working and and um uh, you know and doing what needs to be done in in the course of survival a lot of times we have parents who just didn't do that a lot of times i find this with immigrant parents and 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 especially immigrant parents who come to this country a lot of times and which is which is almost everybody but they come here and their and their parents are survive. Get your degree, get your degree, go to school, do this. If you're a loser, if you can't, da, da. and then a lot of times you you get situations. I I tell this story all the time, man. When I was a little, my dad, I, I've said this a hundred times. If y'all get tired of me saying it, then put it in the in the chat. <laughs> Holler at me in the chat. Um, and uh, but my dad was born 1920. Um, he was uh one of 16 children, eight boys, eight girls. And he grew up, his, my oldest aunt, right? Because my dad did the same thing like me. He didn't have a child until much later. My, I think my dad was 49 when he had me. Um, but uh, um, we literally are in a situation where he grew up during Jim Crow. So if I think about the pressure that he was under because of Jim Crow, how did I expect him to understand the social dynamics of the things that he said and, and the dynamics of which, how it affected me as a, as a child and a young adult? We got a call. Let's go. No, they hung up, but we do have a super chat. You want me to? Uh, yeah, let's go. Let me find it. It's on the man school gal. It's Sterling Borg. Oh, no, we got a call and I'll read the super chat. Anyway. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Call. You're on the air. What's your name? Where are you from? Yo, Brandon from uh, Alabama. What's up, Brandon? What's going on, bro? How can I help what's you, up, bro? Bro, so I see you got the little man school 202 thing going on. I just wanted to pose a question. Sure. Um, it's something I've kind of been seeing about, like, seeing going on, like, in, in like, the sports world. And I just want to get your take on it, you and Godfrey. Is Godfrey there or just you? No, nah, no, nah, it's just me today. I mean, well, he's coming at t after 10, 1030, we start the show. Okay. Okay, baby. Well, um, I guess I'll go ahead. So, you know, Jerry McCain, he plays uh, basketball for the Duke Blue Devils, number zero. Okay. And then you got Caleb Williams, the uh, quarterback for USC. So, like, they're two, you know, they, they, they're TikTok famous or whatever. Um, they both are really good at their sport. Like, I can't give them credit. They both play really good, really good, like, at their position, at their sport. But they push this, you know, nail polish is okay for men to wear. And then they, like, you know, the world is kind of pushing, like, I'm not going to say pushing it, LG. TQ agenda or whatever, but it's everywhere now. You know what I'm saying? Like, a man can't just be a man. A boy just can't be a boy. And things that were, like, kind of customary back in, like, you know, I'm not going to say my day. I'm just 25. So right, myself, right. But back in my dad's day or, or back in, like, you know, just normal times, you know, those things were taboo. Like, a man wearing nail polish, it was clear. He's either, you know, flamboyant. Uh, right. What's the word they used to say? Um, 
Um, he was swishy. I the word, whatever, but you know, he was sus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Fruity. You know what I'm and like the whole he like, fixed this car with a purple wrench, right? <laughs> Good. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so like the zesty athlete, like you know, athleticism used to be you know masculine. It used to be about you know being the best at what you at what you can do, right? You know, Michael Jordan, um, Kobe. I get um, you. AI, You're uh, talking about Jerry Shaq. Peter, hey, even better, Shaq. Oakley, you talking about exactly, like men's yeah. men, whatever. Okay, so right, I I, right. I think you have to take in like I, one of the things I'm I'm 57 years old. I am one of the things that mm-hmm. I don't ever want to be is the get off my lawn old dude. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I I try to be, and then you know if you if if you listen to my content, the man school, we talk about ACE. The acronym is ACE: is authenticity, credibility, and empathy. Right. So I have to have empathy for that. So I'm trying. It's not something that I um, that I'm like that. I don't espouse, but I try to look deeper and in terms of what it is. Now, um, we we do you if I asked you, do you think that gay people are made or are they are they born that way? Um, I think homosexuality is something that you. I think it's like alert behavior. I don't think that you can be born homosexual. At all. Okay, so let me ask you this. Uh, when did you decide to be heterosexual? When did I decide to be heterosexual? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, used, I, tell, I say this like to, like to girls I talk to, whatever like that. I started noticing girls or like noticing like butt or whatever, like girl, like booty, you know, girls butt, whatever. You know, start like, you know, start getting to my, like myself, whatever, around like fourth or fifth grade. Okay, the first so time what I'm, really but what I'm saying, a girl. do you think it was, do you think it was learned or did it just kind of happen that way? Um, I had both parents in the house, so like my dad, my dad, my mom. Um, yeah, but I, there, you, you, know, you really uh, so to say uh, that, but let me say what you, what you're implying by saying I have both parents in my, you're, you're implying that gay men don't have both parents in the house. Which is not true. No, no, no. What I'm implying? Well, no, 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 no. But I'm, I'm telling you, that's what was. the implication is. The implication is that gay men don't. When you say that, the implication, the inference is, right. they can, what I'm saying is that, um, I like I, you know, look, I, I you know, I was born '66. There was always, mm-hmm. there were always gay people in the church. There was always, I, I grew yeah. up with gay uncles. There's no way mm-hmm. you could, there's certain dudes that you look at and you go, this dude is not, this is not learned behavior. You, yeah. uh, you, you know what I'm saying? It just, there was always the, it was that kid that was like the pom-poms, played with dolls and did splits mm-hmm. in the living room. You know what I mean? It just was, mm-hmm. it was yeah. just different. So what Can I'm, I give a little bit of rebuttal? Yeah, yeah, sure. A slight rebuttal. I'm not, I'm not, okay. I'm not, I'm not. No, 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 go ahead. It's I'm fine. Calling, it's listen. fine. Good. Talk. Okay, good, good. Um. So you like you asked me you know, like when like about me specifically. Now me using my dad like saying I have my dad in my house where as an example. I was just saying that to say what I saw was just my dad loving my mom whatever. And I know and I, I, I saw, that's what I saw. I didn't see many like like homo, much homosexuality until I got a little bit older. I got not really see it and guess it really knew what it was until I got a little bit older. But to me it was just customary, just man and woman. Yeah, know, but, but, that, but that it but, was also very natural to you. And there were people. Yeah, what I'm yeah, saying yeah, that yeah, there were yeah, gay yeah. people that grew up in those situations. Who absolutely still, saw the same mm-hmm. thing, and they and it ended up different, different than that. So what right. I'm saying is, right, we, right. we, I mean, if we look at the at the, and I and I think this is all something very new, and I think that the pendulum is swinging. Like I, I mean, I think scientists and and what we're talking about this whole stuff, it's it's. I think the jury is out. But one of the things that jury the jury is not out on is gay people mm-hmm. being gay. That's not when we yeah. talk about gender fluidity and stuff like that. But let's be honest. Right. When we're talking about the expression, the expression of of masculine and feminine is has always right. changed. It has always been mm-hmm. different. There was a time, you know, when I was when I was like when I was, you know, I grew up hip hop. So I was straight yeah. homophobic. Like it was suck mm-hmm. my dick, you know. Um, it was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm aggressive. saying? And 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 yeah, 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 I got it. I got and it. And even though we accepted the gay dudes in the neighborhood, we also, we also, would it was a, it was a dig to tell somebody call a motherfucker the f word or something like that's that was right, fighting right. words. Or, or, in my generation, in my generation, we used to say like when I was living younger, everything was gay. Like, right. oh my god, that's so fucking gay. That's just, like, you know what I'm saying? Not, not really like. Right, right. It was pussy, bitch ass. ass. It, it was bitch ass shit. I yeah. get you, but what I'm saying yeah, is yeah, the yeah, ex- yeah. the expression of of masculinity is always different. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. like you couldn't wear you couldn't wear if you wore a pink shirt. Yo, this yo this nigga got right. a pink shirt. 
until Cameron. Yes, Cameron I was just gonna say that the, Cameron yeah. and yeah. all of them walked around with pink furs, and it was nothing, yeah, yeah. nothing it homosexual. Was hard. It was crazy. Exactly. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying to you is, um, mm-hmm. these expressions. Let me. I'm gonna tell you something, y'all. I'm gonna take my head, for, but y'all see my earring. I have one earring, right? When I was right. younger, mm-hmm. right? If you was gay. You had a you could you could if you was tough you wore an earring if you wore it in the left mm. ear you were straight you wore it in the light right. the right ear so people today right. still ask me how come I only have one one of my earrings it was because the way I was indoctrinated you only had one ear- earring so then when I was watching Jay when I was watching Jay wear two earrings two diamond earrings I was like yo that's gay that's crazy yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so you understand so, what I'm saying in, you know, in time yeah. In yeah. time, things change, and I think that I think we got to step back and have the respect and the empathy for people who um, mm-hmm. who 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 the, the the society changes and so on and so forth. And I think right. to to flip the script, um, to flip the script, and then call this. I mean, I don't know somebody that you know all of a sudden. I mean, we you know, I mean, if you, if how insane is it for me to think in the eighties? Oh, this dude got an earring in his right ear. This nigga gonna suck dick. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a jump. That's, that's a real yeah, that's jump. Not, that, that's, that's a reach. That's a that's a long reach. Yeah, but yeah. but how how different is the but, reach to say that somebody colored their nails right and mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, that somebody colors their nails and all of a sudden they want they want to get a dick in that like you know what I'm saying? It just the, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. I'm saying I'm, I'm that I'm, is a reach itself too. But mm-hmm. what I'm saying, I so is that. all the rest of it. You feel me? Right. It yeah, so is yeah, all yeah. the rest of it. I'm gonna and tell I, you. Here's oh, I'm gonna tell you some hot shit. Ahead. I used to, like when I used to when I was when I was a bit of a dirt bag and I was picking up rods, right? Um, I'm a Q mm-hmm. dog, right? Shout out to my boy Lee. Right. Lee's out. My my LB is listening in the in the. Uh, listening to me night now, so shout out to him. Roo, roo. Um, but I used to wear a black, black nail polish on one one pinky on my pinky, right? right. And what happened right. was I, I pledged Q, and one of our LBs mm-hmm. died, right? Mm-hmm. And I I painted it black, and then when a, when a, you know, and this was a time when nobody had nail polish, right? But I only did one pinky. Yeah, that that was taboo. And and I wore the, I wore the black pinky and so you know but it was a I was so smooth oh my god they would go so yeah. girl was like wow. let me kind of say one thing let yeah me yeah one thing too. let me say one thing so I, I, so you know Brandon Jennings or whatever he plays yeah. basketball player whatever and he's kind of not eccentric but he's he's a he's a fashion kind of icon in the in, in like in the younger in younger guys look at Cam he's an icon in basketball look at Cam exactly look, those guys right there he said this today he's like sometimes if you're that guy. You can kind of do stuff like that and get away with it and yes. be what it is. You know what I'm saying? Because, then, I, but, I but it's, because, it's because you're owning it. You know what I'm saying? Because you're, right, you're right, standing right, right. those you, you down. You what you do. True, so true, true, I would, true. but let me, I, so I had this black pinky, right? And yeah, chick, yeah, yeah, chicks yeah, would yeah. be like, yo, why you got a black pinky? And I, and I mean, <laughs> and I would be like, yo, it represents my, my frat brother to die. And they would be like, ooh. Mm-hmm. That nigga's okay. smooth, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't tell you how many <laughs> yeah. times I got asked because I was like, ooh. The whole vibe thing. Oh, it was like, oh, it, it, it wasn't that I had a black pink. It was it was that I was owning it. Doing something. You're right, doing something for my brother. I got you. I got yeah, it was, and it and was. This, this is laughing up. Yeah, so it phrased. It, 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 it's I'm framed, a, but go ahead. Go. go ahead. Um, so I say, so I, I, wear a, I wear a hoop in my, my left here, too. Now, my dad, he's an old school. He's an old school guy. He, he's born in San Francisco. So like, right. Everything Michael Jordan did, he felt like he was just right there along with him. Right. So, you know, MJ, he was bald. He had the one hoop. Right. In the 90s, everybody was bald. Everybody cut their hair off. You yes. Everybody in the 90s cut their hair off. Right? Yes. Yeah. And that was just the way that was devised. Exactly. Nowadays, with these kids saying, you know, forget the 90s, I don't think, and it's kind of off, 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 off topic, but off topic from when we originally started with. Yeah, yeah. In the 90s, I mean, all the kids nowadays, I think they, they kind of forget that. Your fashion, your your yeah. the things you're seeing now, the things that you see now, they come from that era. The nineties was popping. Yeah, yeah. I mean Yeah. You I don't, you don't gotta tell me. I lived through it. it. I was putting up exactly, exactly. I was putting up numbers bigger than Jordan, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I get I what you're saying. But cool, I'm just man. I mean, I think if we look at this in terms of the transition of um transition of style and fashion and, and mm-hmm. look, I I mean, uh, let's be honest, how many dudes was gay or had gay tendencies 
would not even uh-huh. explore that, would not explore their truth because it was at a place you could get, you could end up face down in some wet you leaves. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so you, yeah. you understand what I'm saying? And I think people, I are, people are going crazy because the, the pendulum swings wide and then it swings back, but, it, but the pendulum always finds a center. And I think, um, uh-huh. I think what, I think where we get, where we, when, when we are looking at the extremes, it, it comes back to the middle, and I think we'll 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 find. It. And I think that you know when we talk about fashion and trends and stuff like that's always going to change, you know. Right, right. Uh, My pre- last thing I want to say, just yeah. uh, and I appreciate you. Let me let me let me talk. Um, I'm a Christian, and I and I, and I want I always want to say this to to people out there that's listening. The first thing is to love. You know what I'm saying? You want to love right. that neighbor, love the person that's next to you. If they gay, if they homosexual, if they trans, if they if they heterosexual, whatever it is, you still love that person. You got you can't hate. You know, if you if you showing hate, you're doing the very same thing as the enemy. You know, and I, I want to pose the question because I'm young, I'm 25, and I know it's I know it's something that's big in this in this world, and I got plenty of life to live. You know, I ain't got no kids yet, but right. I guess I just, I just want to get out there and put that out there that the young people we thinking about these things, and at the same time, these young people out here that know it ain't all hate. Even if I may not agree with it, right. I don't hate that man. I still want that man, to, that man or woman, to succeed and have a a, a life abundantly. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think that's where a lot I want to say are something to you because I don't want to I don't want to destroy your Christianity, but in a way I do. Yes, sir. L- let me say this. Yes, sir. I uh, here's why I'm an atheist, and I'll tell you why I'm an atheist. Okay. Because I cannot, go ahead, go ahead. I cannot, uh, uh, I cannot accept the fact that there would be a God who is all loving, all knowing, that would right. allow my right. people to be enslaved for 400 years, be raped, right. disemboweled, amputated, mm-hmm. murdered, boiled, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, babies cut out of women's, but I can't believe that there would be a God that would allow that happen. Right. Something to think about. I, I'm gonna let I, you go. I, no, I, no, you can't. But uh, I gotta move on. <laughs> okay. But, okay, but, okay, 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 okay. Thank I, you though. Know, I appreciate you, bro. All right. You. See you, man, thank you. Later. Uh, man, I like that, man. Mike, when you got a kid, it's just a young dude who's thinking. You know what I'm saying? I, I think that um, the real, the real. I mean, even when we talk about women and we talk about relationships and men approaching and stuff like that, what we're not doing is we're not having dialogue. We're not talking and we're not thinking. People are, you know, everybody reverts back to their corner and they're not really researching and really going deeper into into stuff. And it's just like, it's, 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 it's uninformed. We got a call. Let's go. Yeah, man. Call, call you on the air. You got to turn the radio off, Pam. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, you got to turn the radio off. I can hear me in the background, all right? But what's up? What's your name and where you calling from? Uh, Joseph. Calling what's... from Seattle. First time calling in, brother. You still hear something in the background? No, no, I got you. What's up, bro? How can I help you? Yeah, I'm appreciating what you're talking about, man. And, uh, Bless up to what you're doing. I appreciate you on Godfrey's show as well. Uh, it's my first time. I was wondering what this show was about. Um, I heard you reference it on uh, Godfrey's show. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I was wondering a man school. I wonder what this was about. And okay. Now, first time being able to actually accidentally came on your show and seeing you on here, so I said, let me check my man out. I appreciate it, man. I finally I had a chance. It. But that, um, you don't know how much yeah, that was, you, was, you don't know how much that means to me because I and I'll explain why. But go ahead, ask your question. No, tell me why, because uh, this is okay. going to get a little deeper. Go ahead and tell well, me what you... Well, because because what I'm what I'm realizing about social media and YouTube and stuff like that, um, people fuck with... Like, there's, a, there's a, a situation where right now, when it comes to YouTube channels and stuff and what we watch, it's the first time that people get a chance to watch what they want to watch, right? There's a, there's a YouTube channel where uh, there's a guy, he takes things and he runs them over with a steamroller. Right. <laughs> millions of views. But who would think that somebody wants to wants to who, millions of people would want to see. Let me see something. Let me go see a watermelon or a toaster run over by a steamroll. But what I'm saying is this, you know, these these the content that's out there on the Internet is you can find anything. There's everything there for everybody. And so when <laughs> people listen to Godfrey. Right. And they see me on there. I'm on, I'm on there because Godfrey is my brother. I'm, I'm, I love him to death. And that's my man. And I got his back. But they don't know who the fuck I am. They don't know. They don't know what our friendship is. And so a lot of times when you're listening to Godfrey's channel, you listen in to Godfrey's channel and you don't want to hear nothing else. So the simple fact that you're checking me out, it means a lot to me because 
there's people who don't fuck with me and only fuck with me because they fu- they happen to be fucking with Godfrey. You understand? And and I right. and, and I'm not, it's it's sort of like let's say if you were you were googling YouTube or you were you were searching YouTube for um, handyman's how to fix sheetrock, right? And then hmm. that sheetrock channel, all of a sudden tomorrow they start doing hip hop news. Mm-hmm. You ain't going What's the chances of you having a hole in your wall? And want to listen to hip hop, you know what I'm saying? It just it's so vast and the spectrum is so wide that it, you right. don't really get people to cross over. I mean, you know, like I'm I'm, I'm happy that Godfrey lets me stream on his channel to, to to gain followers, but what I realize also is more often than not, people listen to Godfrey's channel for Godfrey, and and I respect that. Mm-hmm. I love that dude. He's my that's my brother from another mother, and and. Uh, Right. You know what I'm saying, but you, you. I just want to say I appreciate you taking a look and, uh, you know, giving me a shot. So what's well, how Absolutely. can I help you? Bro? How can I help you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I did make a donation to Godfrey's uh, dope, show. Dope. He tried to do. I appreciate you sending me an acknowledgement. Yeah, yeah. Of that donation, of course. So that course. was awesome. Yeah, but getting into um, man college, it, it, it man, man school, school really yeah. drew me in because I, I've been in ministry for 37 years. I I, I worked so much with troubled relationships. Right. I, I've, I've lived in five different states. I, I've reached so many different people. And, and when people are trying to help support individuals learning how to find and actualize themselves, right. Right. it makes me wonder what are they talking about and what are their bases? What is their basis? I haven't been a Christian all my life, but right. I have been for 37 years. I'm 57 now. Okay. And that's what you and I say, Mace. Yeah, yeah. And so, but but I, it's interesting, the brother who, just, who was just on before me, yeah. I said, now, I was thinking to myself, now, how could he how could he tell this young man what he's telling him and, 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 and be hoping to build him into a man? Because some of the things you were saying, I just kept wondering, okay, and why, how could he say that? Now, how could he say that? And I'm sitting here really engrossed in your conversation. Okay. I'm all, yeah, I, yeah. I like your enlightenment. You're so real. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's rare. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I'm sitting there thinking to myself, why would he say that? Is he trying to teach men how to, be men, you know, man school. Yeah. So I thought I would call in and think, how, how, why would you say that if a person is a homosexual or another person is a heterosexual, then automatically those two propensities have been evolved equally? If if you if you are if you're looking at the reality of social influence on a person's desires and interests, a person's capacity to genetic tendencies. Some of that, some of that stuff has a direct impact on a person's sexual choice, I would and agree. it doesn't have to be a I, natural I, order. It I, can I, be something that a person evolves I, into. I absolutely agree Vers- with you. I, I think that's yeah, a re- Vers- I think that's a reasonable that's a reasonable reasonable critique. But I would say what I would say to that is, if somebody's not gay, and somehow society has has got them to a situation where um, they're in a homosexual relationship. I doubt very seriously that you don't like getting it in the butt and you continue doing it because of social, because of the social situation. It may have gotten you there, right? But it, it, I don't believe that you, it would keep you there. Does, does that make sense? Did we lose the mic? We lost the mic? Caller, can you hear Are us? You yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 I got you. And 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 the reason why I'm jumping on this is because it was just one of three or four different points. And I know we're not going to be the project on this call long enough to cover all four. Right, right. But this was because I grew up around people who were in my family and out of my family who right. were just diehard, dedicated, cutthroat homosexual. Right. And and they they became that. And as I communicated with them about their plight, then it, it made me realize that a lot of what it is that they've attributed in contemporary conversation to something that they say was a genetic propensity, as I listened to them historically, they really evolved into that away from what was natural because of experiences with the opposite sex. Yeah, I think you. So, but I also think that you're. I also think that you're. Even the terms that you're using, is is is, is problematic. I, I think you're saying because you're deciding what the norm is. Um, there was a time when people, when 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 Christians, evangelical tr- Christians, would say that black that black people and white people shouldn't be together. There were times when people's people's propensity or people's belief system was that that black people were subhuman. So what I'm saying, when we use these words, these words like normalcy, 
I think that it, it's problematic because we're not taking into consideration the historical idea of how people have been oppressed and been treated horribly because of a belief system that became the normative. Does that make sense? Of course, but okay. at the same time, black people also have said that there are certain blacks who are not equal. So, I mean, it's not a race, it's not a race thing when they're talking about, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm listening. It, okay, it's, it's, it's not a race thing because there's black folks who will tell you that you're not equal with them and you could be a black person. So yeah, but but what we're me, but we're not talking about people, we're, we're not talking about the individual equals. We're saying that white supremacy has said that as a whole, black people are inferior, that are subhuman. We're not talking about as individuals one to one. And then he goes, "Well, you ain't you ain't as good as me, but he's better than me, or whatever." We're talking about as a broad stroke. When you talk about normatively, that was that was the science of the day. And I don't mean just the the social aspect of but it was the science of the day with pseudoscientists yeah, saying this and talking about the thickness of our skulls and all kinds of stuff so what and i don't want to you know i don't want to norm i don't want to go a battle and say that that you know the plight of homosexuals is the same as white as black black people but what i'm saying is the 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 discussion um can be paralleled in that same way. So I think we have to be careful about the words that we use. And well, I, I understand that you're a Christian and you believe If you don't that. have norms, then you can't have abnorms. And, and if, you, if somebody can't be abnormal or something can't be ab... Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. If, if, something, if something can't be classified as abnormal, then why do we have mental health, mental health and mental science? So we do have normatives and tendencies that have been historical for human behavior that have been studied for thousands of years, if you obviously trace it back to when science began in Africa. So we're not talking about European history. We're talking about human history. We're talking about anthropology. We're talking about okay. the historical tendencies of norms and behaviors that okay, keep now, practicing themselves. And tie that, in, tie, in, tie that into, okay. tie that so, into what so you're saying. So all I'm saying is there, there is something that we call normal and abnormal, but it comes down to human behavior. And, and so and if you're talking about, I know we don't like getting into homosexuality because homosexuality has become this new victimized group. And even though people do things to homosexuals that they shouldn't do, there are also people who do things to children they shouldn't do, absolutely. Uh, animals they shouldn't do. So we're not trying to sit here and act like that. We're trying to choose or lift homosexuality as though it's supposed to be some singular group to target because it isn't. But the reality is to say it's equal with heterosexuality, but it comes down to normal human tendency. Now you're trying, it seems to me, you're taking a, 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 a far left view and you're trying to match it with a normal uh, idea of reality and you try to make them equal. It's like apples and oranges. I, I, and so, I disagree with you 100%. I, I, I'll tell you why I disagree with you 100%. Like I said mm -hmm. before, there was a situation where the black, black people, the normative stance of who black people were in this country was that we were inferior genetic beings. That was normative. Do you understand? So, and I and I and I get what you're saying. Pr prior to that, we, I mean, there's there's always been homosexuals. I think what the problem is, and if you, I mean, I don't want to go too far in this because we're kind of way sure. off the target, but. Um, I, I just want to say that w there's always been homosexuals in the black community. The churches are standing on the, on the homosexuals, and they they run the choirs. They are the ushers, and so we we love them when we do that, and then we denounce them and in 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 a sense as if as if this is not a normative situation. And I'm not saying normative in terms of the amount of people. I mean, I, here's a, here's a here's a question. If I asked you. How many people do you think in the in the country are uh, gay, lesbian, LGBT? What what percentage of, of people would you say that is? Would you think? I, uh, I would even guess because the ones who are and not making it public are part of that percentage. And and I feel like the point that still remains, it's not about whether a person is practicing something or not. It's when you equate the idea of being a man with accepting something that we say is a part of our natural order as heterosexual men, and then to say, well, we're, that's the same as a homosexual man. A man who's heterosexual is, has developed that desire in the exact same way a homosexual was, has developed his desire. And as a, unless I misinterpreted what you said, you were equating the heterosexual tendency of a man 
with the homosexual tendency of a man and saying that both of those evolved in the same way. And I, I just couldn't see that to be something instrumental and in, how, in teaching how would you, a man how to be a man. Uh, because because somebody who's not that way is just not going to see that. They're just not going to. I don't think that's the case. Now, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm not. Listen, I don't want to be Harvey Milk in this motherfucker right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be the advocate. Uh, the gay advocate, but I think that we're we're of the same age, and I think to a certain extent we 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 we're of somewhat of the same ilk. And I think that um, what I keep referring back is to how people have thought in the past and how they've been wrong, but about that and the normative sense of what we think things were, right? Was has always been and has always evolved. And I think that I uh, do. I think that we are at a place right now where this is hyper hyper important hypersexual hypersensitive about this but i think what ha what i do know is that everything settles back to the middle i don't even think we're going to be having these conversations um in another 5 years and people of are going not because and people are going to be doing a conversation about adults having relationship with children then it's going to be adults yeah, having relationship I, with animals then yeah, it's going to be adults yeah, that's the I mean, slippery, we're going to that's a very to that's a very christian thing to say and it may be and it may not i don't know i don't know where that's going but i i, I think i i think the um uh, like I said before, it, it, there was a time when women couldn't own property. There was a time when women couldn't wear pants. I don't know. I don't know how how uh, and and all of these things are ridiculous because if you think about the, the the garb that people wore in the times of when when Jesus walked, they wore dresses. <laughs> Men wore dresses and sandals and and gowns. And so what I'm saying is, if we Look, I, I, I believe if you are a Christian that you believe in live, live and let live. But I'm also think that I think that you have to give a little leeway in terms of in terms of the fact that you. But I but I but I can also understand why you don't, because you believe that God's word is absolute. And I don't. And we have that. We, we, we come from that different perspective. And because we come from that perspective, I, I, I think we're just going to have to agree to disagree. Well, I don't I don't I don't think that you take anything that's written to be absolute in the context of its writing. You have to understand it from the, per the context of its intent. Because if I say that dog is cool, okay, a dog being cool in the literal sense doesn't make sense. But if you understand the purpose of my words, you'll better understand what I'm trying to say. And so I don't look at the Bible or, or biblically based uh, commentary as being something you can absolutely understand just by reading the words. And so I'm not sure if I'm answering or addressing your point, but no, I don't, I don't believe that the Bible is just you read it, you take it at what it says at face value, and you go with it. No, you got to understand its intent. What, what, and uh, like what, yeah, and how do we know that that is what the intent is? Because the, con by, the, 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 because the founding fathers believed that the con they believed in the freedom of people as they were enslaving people because they didn't see black people as people. So, so this was their interpretation, and this is your interpretation, and you probably, you, I, I would, I would say that you're just as wrong as they were. Uh, but what do you mean? What do you mean, founding fathers? We're, we're talking about what I'm saying is in the Constitution. Being in, in terms, Africa, what what founding if fathers? If we if we want to go to Africa, we've uh, in Africa. That's we've, where he, that's where it started. I agree. I agree. And the, nor but there was there's always been cultures and difference in cultures. If you know anything, mm -hmm. if you know anything about in, in ancient Kemet, right? The, the mm -hmm. first of all, the ancient Kemet didn't even believe in Jesus Christ. So when we take mm -hmm. it back there, you have you have taken on uh, uh, the belief of something that doesn't even exist. So you can't you cannot mm -hmm. you cannot use Africa as your foundation and then not culturally culturally. Uh, exhume everything that is actual. You can't cherry pick Africa and then take the rest of history and act like that's not happening. I just think that's, well, a, that's hypo it's, it's hypocritical. I, I feel there's a lot about Christianity that maybe it'd be useful to, for someone to sit down in a really nice conversation with you and share some things that traditional Christianity possibly has been exposed to you. Now, because let me ask you something. When, when you, you say talk about, when, when you, you say traditional, him, Han, him, uh, Imhotep, when you start going back and calling names, you're talking about adopting someone's explanation of those things who wasn't there. So all of it is believed by faith, whether it's the Bible or the or any right. other. Right. And what does faith mean? That what is faith? Say it again. What is faith? Faith is. 
faith is a, is a driving principle that aids an individual's willingness to accept the things that they cannot understand. Or right. Explain. It's things that you believe without evidential proof. You can have evidential proof and still not understand its concept. Um, you don't have evidential proof. You cannot well, prove. Okay, when somebody you, said that a tree is a million years old, how can you prove that that person is right or not? You know that there are scientific ways to do that. You already know that. There's rings in the tree. There's observational okay. science about that. We can do that. So that's just I'm not you, true. I'm glad you said that. Who sat there and watched a tree develop enough for them to be to count how long every ring took? Who who did that? We didn't. We, we didn't. But, oh, but oh, exactly. So but there's, we didn't. We didn't. But we faith. but we can look at a tree that's two years old, and we can look at a tree that's ten years old. And we can observe that in a real sense, and then we can. But the problem, I mean, listen, don't forget, don't don't get me wrong. Science is something that is constantly changing, as and as we get more information, because we we evolve. we adjust and we we evolve science from that. The difference mm -hmm. is the word of God doesn't. You are saying that mm -hmm. the word itself is divine and it's finished. The book is finished, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and and then we take we say that. Uh, homosexuality is an abomination but it, but it's also an abomination to in that in I'm, and i'm not a biblical dude so don't don't start don't, you know don't, don't beat me up but i'm saying it's also wearing two different garments at the same time is also an abomination you're not supposed to wear wool and cotton you're also not supposed to eat uh, eat um you're not supposed to eat shellfish in uh, in timothy i'm not sure which timothy is but it says a woman should remain silent and and, uh, and and silent in the presence of a man because she is she's from his bone. So I mean, there's there's plenty of things. I, and I don't know I don't know what your relationship is, but I'm quite sure your woman don't remain silent. Well, the, you're really giving a good example of why taking of a, a, the scripture and attempting to say what the scripture means by reading the literal words, and then say that because something doesn't seem like it's logical, then it shouldn't be something we should practice. No, I'm, I'm what I'm saying. Because we haven't really understood. What I'm what saying is explain saying. it to that, me how it's that goes logical. Back to my original. I'm, what well, I'm saying well, is my... explain it to me how it's logical. And if you can't do that, I'm just, I'm, listen, I would love to have proof of a God. I would love that. That would be great. But for me, for me, uh, nobody has proven that. So I, I wanna, I, I'm gonna have to shut this down, though, because I, I, we gotta get off the line. I, I, we, but I, I appreciate the spirited conversation. I absolutely, um, what I would do is hit me on, uh, hit me on my Instagram. My Instagram is the Dante Nero. I would love to continue that, man. I, I'm, but I got a bunch of, uh, I got a bunch of. We, I, we actually have to shut it down now because I'm, uh, the, sure. <laughs> we gotta, but man, what is your name again? Joseph, I'm gonna continue to watch because yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna get more well, I mean, Joseph, I mean, it was a, it was a great brother. it was a great it was a great conversation. And I appreciate it was respectful and and we have a difference of opinion and 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 maybe you can convince me. I don't, I don't know if that's possible, but I but I appreciate your respectfulness and I resp I, I just you are, you're a, a, a gentleman and a scholar, my friend, and I appreciate you. Okay. Hey, thank you, brother. Bless up, man. All right, bless up. Easy. Yo, we gotta shut it down. I'm, I'm I mean, I know y'all wanted to get some uh how to get some pussy questions in. <laughs> but, but Mike uh, but he he sucked me in. He sucked me in. Is uh, you know, this is I mean, I but I mean, let me just say this real quick. Uh you gotta be so so let me just say, even to have that conversation is is with him, is is him to have that conversation with me and me to have that conversation, you, you gotta you got to know some shit. You know what I'm saying? And so the depth, so let me just bring it back around. Reading books, exposing yourself, being you the best version of yourself, exploring things, traveling, doing things that you didn't, you, you've you never done before. And I'm not talking about fucking a dude. So, Joseph, if you're listening, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is just exposing yourself to different things, reading and educating yourself, and you being the best version of, of yourself is always going to be the thing that makes you most attractive as a man. And, and, and your confidence will soar because you have done the work in your life. Um, man, thanks for listening. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? Uh, don't forget to follow me on all platforms, uh, Real Man School, Man School, Dante Nero. I put up comedy, too. I mean, everybody who knows me knows I'm a stand-up comic. Um, 
And the Patreon is patreon.com slash manschool202. Consultations, DanteNero.com. Click on consult, and you can book time with me directly. Uh, man, I love y'all, man. I love y'all for listening. I mean, it was a good one. Um, and thanks, Joseph. Thanks for calling, man. I appreciate you. Uh, shout out to my dog out in there listening to me. What up, team? And uh, peace. We out of here. Man School 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't.